In today's video, we are going to discover five ways that you can minimize arguments in your relationships with your partner, children, and family. As I teach in my programs, conflict is necessary in a relationship because it can lead to greater understanding and growth. I go into more detail about this in Lesson 1. Conflict and arguing can be two separate things. Arguing is a common way people deal with conflict. Since we cannot always delete conflict, let us have a look at ways to at least minimize how often we have arguments. Okay, let's begin. Hi and welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Ernie Silovic and I'm a relationship trainer and therapist where I teach couples how to be masters in the art and science of love, romance, communication, fun, excitement, passion and emotional fulfillment. The first method I'd like to share with you is something you most likely have not heard of and it is called the agreement frame. It is a technique taught in NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is the science of subjective experience. The agreement frame has three parts. Firstly, when it comes to communication between people, we can either a. agree with them or b. respect their point of view and opinion or c. appreciate that they have their own ideas, thoughts, feelings and the like. The second part is that we delete the word but and replace it with an. And finally, we need to listen before replying so we can respond appropriately. How will we put this into action? Let me give a quick example. Let's say you and your partner are arguing about who needs to get up at 2 in the morning to feed your new baby. Here is what a typical scenario would sound like. Wife, honey, can you please get up and feed the baby? Husband, I am so tired and you know I have to go to work in the morning. I got up last night. Can't you do it? I didn't want this baby in the first place. There is no need to continue as you can imagine how things went. Neither feels heard, appreciated, loved, understood, cared for, listened to or respected with the result of both of you not talking, feeling drained, distant and having no intimate feelings of love or warmth. Now let us use the agreement frame instead and find out how things could have gone. Wife, honey, would you please get up and feed the baby? Husband, I appreciate that you are tired and probably overwhelmed with looking after our new baby and my boss has already given me two warnings about making mistakes at work. Wife, would you do it just this one more time, please? I am so exhausted. Husband, I respect that you are feeling exhausted and I have been getting up every night to feed the baby for the last month. Wife, it hasn't been that long. Husband, I appreciate how you may feel that way and it's funny how time flies. Wife, I agree. Yeah, it sure does. We could go on and I'm sure you get the gist. Whatever the outcome above between the husband and wife, at least they weren't arguing. The next method is one you may have heard of before, though I think it is not taught properly as it has missing parts. It is called I statements. This method has four parts to it, with parts three and four not taught, from my understanding. The four parts consist of 1. I feel 2. When 3. And what I'd like is 4. Keep quiet for a few moments so they can process what you said. We express how we feel without using the word you, which is frequently misconstrued as an attack and raises people's defenses. These statements have us take responsibility for how we feel because of someone else's behavior or whatever. Let me give an example of how to use our statements. I feel frustrated when I come home and the house is not tidy and what I'd like is to see the home cleaner. The third method of minimizing arguments is by using assertiveness techniques. Assertiveness is great for standing up for oneself when we refuse to be manipulated. These are verbal skills and most likely would not work if used on someone who is threatening your life. There are several methods here, so let's just get into them. Here are some of the techniques and skills taught in assertiveness training. Number one skill is called broken record. This is a skill that by calm repetition, saying what you want over and over again, teaches persistence without you having to rehearse arguments or angry feelings beforehand. The general effect is that it allows you to feel comfortable in ignoring verbal manipulation, argumentative baiting, irrelevant logic, while sticking to your desired point. 
An example is, salesman, you do want your children to learn faster, don't you? John, I understand and I'm not interested in buying. Salesman, your wife would want her children to have them. John, I understand and I am not interested. Salesman, it's awful hot out here, do you mind if I come in for a drink of water? John, I understand and I'm not interested. Salesman, you mean you won't give me a drink? John, I understand how you feel and I'm not interested. Salesman, you don't understand or you would want to buy these for your children. John, I do understand and I'm not interested. The second skill is called fogging. This is a skill that teaches acceptance of manipulative criticism by calmly acknowledging to your critic the probability that there may be some truth in what they say, yet allows you to remain your own judge of what you do. The general effect is that it allows you to receive criticism comfortably without becoming anxious or defensive, while giving no reward to those using manipulative criticism. An example of this is, Critic, I see you are dressed in your usual sloppy manner. Mary, that's right. I am dressed in my usual way. Critic, those pants. They look like you stole them off the Goodwill rack without pressing them. Mary, they are a bit wrinkled, aren't they? Critic, wrinkled is the understatement of the week. They are positively dreadful. Mary, you're probably right. They do look a bit worse for wear. Critic, and that shirt. Your taste must be all in your mouth. Mary, that's probably true. My taste in clothes isn't one of my strong points. Critic, anyone who dresses like that obviously hasn't got much going for them. Mary, you're right. I do have a lot of thoughts. Moving on, the third skill is called negative assertion. This is a skill that teaches acceptance of your errors and faults without having to apologize by strongly and sympathetically agreeing with hostile or constructive criticism of your negative qualities. The general effect is that it allows you to look more comfortably at negatives in your own behavior or personality without feeling defensive and anxious or resorting to denial of real error while at the same time reducing your critics' anger or hostility. One example of this is, Mother, Mary, you shouldn't have cut your hair. It just doesn't suit you. Mary, that was a dumb thing for me to do, Mum. I don't like it this way myself. The next main skill is called negative inquiry. It is a skill that teaches the active prompting of criticism to use the information, if helpful or exhaust it, if manipulative, while prompting your critic to be more assertive, less dependent in using manipulative ploys. General effect is that it allows you more comfortably to seek out criticism about yourself in close relationships while prompting the other person to express honest negative feelings and improve communication. One example of this can look like, John, Mary, you don't look good today. Mary, what do you mean? John, well, I noticed the way you appear today. It doesn't look too good. Mary, is it the way I look or is it the way I'm dressed? John, well, that blouse doesn't look too good. Mary, what is it about the blouse that makes me look bad? John, well, it just doesn't seem to fit. Mary, do you think it's too loose? John, well, maybe that's it. Mary, how about the color of it? Does that make me look funny? John, the color doesn't look too good. Mary, anything else besides the color that's bad? John, no, that's it. There are three more skills I will mention and let you research these on your own as they are also somewhat self-explanatory. The first extra skill I recommend you look up is called free information. It is a skill that teaches the recognition of simple cues given by a social partner in everyday conversation to indicate what is interesting or important to that person. The overall effect is that it allows you to feel less shy in entering conversation while at the same time prompting social partners to talk more easily about themselves. The next extra skill I recommend you gain is called self-disclosure. This is a skill that teaches the acceptance and initiation of discussion of both the positive and negative aspects of your personality, behavior, lifestyle, intelligence to enhance social communication and reduce manipulation. The overall effect is that it allows you comfortably to disclose aspects of yourself and your life that previously caused feelings of ignorance, anxiety or guilt. 
And the last final bonus, assertive skill, I recommend you to research is called workable compromise. In using your verbal assertive skills, it is practical whenever you feel that your self-respect is not in question to offer a workable compromise to the other person. You can always bargain for your goals unless the compromise affects your personal feelings of self-respect. If the end goal involves a matter of your self-worth, there can be no compromise. The fourth method for minimizing arguments is called pattern interrupts. Have you ever seen a couple argue and be so invested in it? They are stuck in a pattern of arguing. Have you ever had a habit that was hard to change or stop? Our bodies are following a pattern. Have you ever seen two dogs or cats fighting and then someone comes over and disrupts their pattern, causing the fight to end? We can use this to our advantage. If, halfway through an argument, one of you becomes sane, you can use a pattern interrupt. Hell, humor is a great way to communicate. You can say or do anything that the other person isn't expecting. Ladies, imagine you are arguing with your man, and before it gets too heated, you become sane and say to him, Can you imagine how crazy our makeup sex is going to be once we are finished arguing? With a smile on your face. If he is a clever enough man, he'll say, Why wait? Let's go now. Argument over. You can make funny faces to interrupt someone's pattern, make funny noises, ask questions, or make statements that make no sense, so they must stop and think about what you just said. In the early days of my wife and I getting to know each other, if she felt angry at me, I would simply say something, which I won't repeat here. So, while she was feeling angry, she had to picture what I said because it totally changed her focus and was so different from anything anyone ever told her before. She had to start laughing and the anger was gone. You can come up with some specific pattern interrupts in advance. Have fun with them. Let your imagination run. The next method is one you probably won't expect to hear from a therapist, and that is, depending on whom you are having the argument with, there are times when it is simply best to walk away from them. I have that situation with my sister. In my more than 50 years on this planet, we were close for about 3 to 4 years only, and that was when I was in my mid-teens. Since then, she has joined a religion that I will not discuss, and she has become toxic in my opinion, to the point where we no longer speak. After four years of not talking, she texted me out of the blue on my birthday, only for me to have to stop communicating with her some three months later. If you find that someone is toxic, you are better off leaving the situation and closing that door. If children are involved, then minimize contact with the toxic partner. If it is one of your children that is toxic, seek help from a professional. Okay, so here we have it. Five ways to minimize arguing in your relationships. I trust you have enjoyed this video and to ensure you keep getting more great quality information, click on one of the other videos at the end here or if you really want your relationship to move forwards in the most effective way, start going through your program, Awaken His Passion, A Course for Women or Awaken Her Passion, A Course for Men. I go into more detail with this information in them. You receive a full 30 day money back guarantee and get to listen to two thirds of the course with online support in our undergraduate Facebook group to find out if it is a good fit for you, so click on the link in the description box. I trust to chat with you in our undergraduate Facebook group.